Last time, we reviewed the entire boost course pass and figured out not only why it was so good, but also what issues it had. Today, meanwhile, we're going to take a look at some of those issues and try to fix them. That's right, we're remaking the booster course pass. Now, when some people have done this that I've seen, they just remove all the bad courses and replace them with fan favorites. That's not entirely what we're going to be doing today. Instead, we're going to be staying a little bit more realistic and following a few simple rules. Rule number one. All 16 of Tor's Nitros, as well as all 5 Booster Course Pass Nitros, must be included. A lot of people think that the reason the Booster Course Pass exists in the first place is to preserve Mario Kart Tour's content in a main series Mario Kart game. With that in mind, it's weird that they left one course out, so... Today, no course left behind. Basically what I'm saying is, Pipeline fans, you're getting included here. Rule number two. All retro courses that are picked must be in Tor. Pretty self-explanatory. Everything that was in the original Boost Course Pass either was already in Tor or eventually made its way in. So as much as I want to include courses like Toad's Factory or Wario Coliseum or do my all Rainbow Road Spiny Cup, I'm not going to do that. We're staying realistic here. Rule number three is pretty simple. No game besides Mario Kart Tour is allowed to have more than one of its courses appear as a retro in a single wave. This one is mainly just done to limit the amount of courses per game that appear, as things started getting out of hand with the Wii courses in the later half of the Booster Course Pass. So now, every game is capped at a maximum of six courses that it can have here. Yeah, two of the Wii courses are being removed. Now, number four isn't so much of a rule relating to the course selections like the other three, but rather just something that I would have liked to have seen in the original Boost Course Pass. That being that here, I will say, assume all of these courses are up to the base game standards visually. And those are our rules for today. Pretty standard stuff, but they cover what we need. Now before we jump into the remake, there are two other things that I want to say. Firstly, if you guys do enjoy this video, remember to like and subscribe because I actually have a few more things like this planned if this does well. And second, I just want to give a quick shout out to HD Rookie because his video on this topic is what gave me the motivation to make my picks into a video as well. His video is very well made, it'll be linked down below. But with that, let's jump into the remake. Wave 1, of course, opens up with the Golden Dash Cup. This cup has undergone some pretty substantial changes, but Paris Promenade gets to stay as the opener, as, like I mentioned in my full Booster Course Pass review, I think this course served not only as a good opening for the DLC, but also a good introduction to tour courses for those who are unfamiliar with the game. Here's where the changes start, though. Taking the second slot of the Golden Dash Cup will no longer be N64 Choco Mountain, but instead, moving over from the Lucky Cat Cup, we have GBA Sky Garden. I've seen a lot of other remakes of the Boost Course Pass just straight up remove this course because they think it's garbage, but... If you've seen my review, you know that I love this course in 8 Deluxe, and I see no reason to remove it, so it gets to go here now. Up next, for the third slot of the Golden Dash Cup, we have our first complete new addition to the Booster Course Pass. Say goodbye to Toad Circuit and hello to 3DS Shy Guy Bazaar. I think this course absolutely deserved to be in the Booster Course Pass, especially considering that it was scrapped from the Wii U DLC in favor of the, albeit much better, Neo Bowser City. So I'm giving it another chance here. And rounding out the Golden Dash Cup will be another complete new addition, Tor Piranha Plant Pipeline. That's right, not only does it get to be included here, it gets to be in from the very beginning. Now as for why I put it here instead of having it take Ninja Hideaway's spot in the Lucky Cat Cup, it's simple. I just think having the Nitros in the first cup makes a bit more sense. <laughs> Also, with its addition here as part of Wave 1, it will have actually released in the Booster Course Pass before Tor, therefore making it a Booster Course Pass Nitro, not a Tor Nitro. Although don't worry, one Booster Course Pass Nitro later on will be removed to release after it debuted in Tor, so the number of Nitros for each game stays at 16 and 5 respectively. 
Also, Pipelines Edition means that half pipes will have been part of the Booster Course Pass since Wave 1 instead of having to wait until Wave 3. But with that, the Golden Dash Cup is finished and we can move on over to the rest of Wave 1 in the Lucky Cat Cup. Compared to the Golden Dash Cup, the Lucky Cat Cup's changes are a lot simpler. Although, like the Golden Dash Cup, its city course has gone unchanged. Tokyo Blur still opens it up. But, this cup actually gets to keep another one of its original courses, this being Shroom Ridge. I've just moved it from the second slot in the cup to the third. Now, obviously, a slot in this cup is open as we moved Sky Garden, which was initially here, over to the Golden Dash Cup. So now, taking its place as the second course of the Lucky Cat Cup, will be N64 Koopa Troopa Beach. Now, why Koopa Troopa Beach specifically? Well, a few reasons. Number one, I needed another N64 course, and of the options in Tor, this was surprisingly the best one that isn't already in the game. And two, I just needed another fairly simple course to fill this slot. And to end off the Lucky Cat Cup, we'll be moving over the course formerly being the Golden Dash Cup Ender, that being Coconut Mall. For one, this course's music was used in the reveal trailer for the Boost Course Pass, so it being in Wave 1 is a necessity. But also, I think it's just good to end the wave with a fan-favorite course, instead of doing what the original Boost Course Pass did, where it ended off the wave with, well, <laughs> garbage. And that's the end of the new Wave 1. A golden dash cup of Paris Promenade, Sky Garden, Shy Guy Bazaar, and Piranha Plant Pipeline, and the Lucky Cat Cup consisting of Tokyo Blur, Koopa Troopa Beach, Shroom Ridge, and Coconut Mall. In terms of fully removed courses for this wave, we only have one, that being Toad Circuit. In terms of the courses that are moved to other waves, we have Ninja Hideaway and Chaco Mountain, both for differing reasons. And in terms of the brand new additions, we have Shy Guy Bazaar, Piranha Plant Pipeline, and Koopa Troopa Beach. As well as Half Pipes being a thing as part of Wave 1, instead of having to wait until Wave 3. Wave 2 starts off with the Turnip Cup, which, although it is going to be pretty different, still opens up with a New York Minute. In fact, I'm just going to say it now. I didn't change any of the city courses in the first three waves of the Boost Course Pass, so if I stop mentioning cities until Wave 4, now you know why. Waluigi Pinball is still here as well, although like Shroom Ridge back in the Lucky Cat Cup, it's just being moved to the third slot. Mario Circuit 3 is also just being completely removed, and in its place, you know, I think in the original Boost Course Pass, we had to wait way too long for a Double Dash course. So here, as part of Wave 2, we will be getting Mushroom Bridge. Now, I still believe that Mushroom City was originally planned to be in Wave 6 of the Booster Course Pass, but I can't use that course here because it's not in Tour. Therefore, I'll settle for the next best thing and use Bridge instead. Plus, it fills in a gap in Wave 2 that I otherwise didn't really have an idea of what to put here. And to end off the Turnip Cup, yeah, this is where I'm putting Ninja Hideaway. Honestly, as much as I wanted to remove this course, I can't, and this was really the only other place I had to put it, so here it is. Next up is the Propeller Cup, which had very simple changes. Or should I say, a very simple change, as there's only one thing different here. Mushroom Gorge is out, and Koopa Cape is in. I mentioned earlier that two of the Wii courses would have to be removed, and unfortunately Mushroom Gorge just didn't quite make the cut. Koopa Cape is taking this spot in Wave 2 because, well, Wave 5 had two Wii courses and that's not allowed anymore. And that's the new Wave 2. The Turnip Cup consisting of New York Minute, Mushroom Bridge, Waluigi Pinball, and Ninja Hideaway, and the Propeller Cup consisting of Sydney Sprint, Snowland, Koopa Cape, and Sky High Sunday. Now, you may notice that there are two Nitro courses in this wave, being Ninja Hideaway and Sky High Sunday. This was bound to happen with the rules that I was using, because I have to include all five Booster Course Pass Nitros and all 16 Tour Nitros. So, I just chose to do it here. 
And besides, I think that this wave's non-tour retro selection more than makes up for Ninja Hideaway's inclusion. Now in terms of overall changes this wave got, actually none of its courses got moved to other waves. They were all either still here or just flat out removed. Of the ones that were fully removed, we have Mario Circuit 3, Calamari Desert, and Mushroom Gorge, with the only complete new addition being Mushroom Bridge. Now moving into Wave 3, this is where the big changes really start. Beginning with the Rock Cup. Admittedly, two of its courses are still here, those being London Loop and Rock Rock Mountain. But that's mostly because I think removing these courses from the Rock Cup would be a bit of a crime, don't you agree? Although while it does stay in the Cup, Rock Rock Mountain is moving to the second slot. And like I mentioned earlier, with the exception of Sky High Sunday in the Propeller Cup, Nitros will now be ending the first cups in their respective waves, so let's give a warm Rock Cup welcome to Merry Mountain. In fact, this course is the entire reason that rule exists, as in the original Boost Course Pass, it is the only Nitro to not end a cup. I thought that was kind of weird, so I just moved it to the first cup, that way it doesn't have to compete with Rainbow Road. For the final spot in the Rock Cup, I actually had quite a few issues figuring out what to put here, as nothing really seemed to fit. Ultimately, I ended up deciding on moving DS Mario Circuit here from Wave 4. Alright, I know this seems like a strange choice, so hear me out. I didn't have a DS course in this wave anymore, as I have fully removed Peach Gardens. And this course is actually difficult enough, believe it or not. This course is not only part of the Star Cup in Mario Kart DS, but it's the third course of it. It also just had never been remade before 8 Deluxe, and I was happy with its inclusion in the Boost Course Pass, so I'll move it a bit earlier. Also, this means that it still gets into Boost Course Pass before Tour, but this time by three months instead of a week. Now, the Moon Cup is the most changed cup that we have talked about so far. In fact, the only course that's still here is Berlin Byways. Like was mentioned earlier, Mary Mountain has been moved to the Rock Cup. As for Peach Gardens, I said earlier that it has been completely removed from my Boost Course Pass, and we already had DS Mario Circuit in the last cup, so that's our DS course. 3DS Rainbow Road is in a similar position as we had Rock Rock Mountain already, so that's our 3DS course. Filling that slot will be Wii Rainbow Road, and before you ask, yes, I did just swap 3DS and Wii Rainbow Road's placements. The second slot in the Moon Cup will be filled by a course that was originally in the Rock Cup, I just didn't have room for it there in this remake, that being Boo Lake. Again, another really nice GBA remake, I just had to move it here. And for the final course of the Moon Cup, or really the third, I'm going to fix one of the issues that I had with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's course selection, that being the lack of Bowser Castles. So, coming with Wii Rainbow Road straight from the Spiny Cup will be SNES Bowser Castle 3. And that's the new Wave 3, consisting of London Loop, Rock Rock Mountain, DS Mario Circuit, and Merry Mountain in the Rock Cup, and Berlin Byways, Boo Lake, SNES Bowser Castle 3, and Wii Rainbow Road in the Moon Cup. For the first time in this video, we actually have a wave with no entire new additions to the Booster Course Pass, as I just didn't think there were many necessary here. We did, however, have two courses moved to other waves, those being Maple Treeway and 3DS Rainbow Road. Both for the same reason as well, there's already a course from those games in this wave being Rock Rock Mountain and Wii Rainbow Road. We also have one full-on removal this wave, that being DS Peach Gardens. As much as I like the course, the changing paths were a bit too controversial on release, so like Calamari Desert, I just removed it. Really though, I think all three of those were replaced with courses of equal value, so this wave is still incredibly good. Now we move on over to Wave 4, which, if you remember, was my favorite wave of the entire Booster Course Pass. That being said, there are still some changes to be made. 
To the boomerang cup, that is. The fruit cup I actually left completely unchanged. Honestly, I don't have any issues with the fruit cup as it currently is, and none of the changes I made to the boomerang cup affect it in any way, so yeah, fruit cup doesn't need to change. Boomerang cup, however, is a completely different story. Like some other cups we've talked about earlier, the boomerang cup only has one of its original courses. Now I know what you're thinking, which city is it? It's actually neither of them. The boomerang cup contains our first city changes, and the one course that gets to stay is Waluigi Stadium. DS Mario Circuit also isn't here anymore for obvious reasons. We put it in Wave 3. So instead, taking its place as a relatively simple course for this cup, finally we have N64 Choco Mountain. Now as for the city replacements, opening up the Boomerang Cup will now be Los Angeles Laps, and closing out the Boomerang Cup and Wave 4 as a whole will be Vancouver Velocity. LA Laps just feels like it was meant to be in Wave 4, considering it was a spring release, and there was a lot going on in Hollywood for Nintendo during the spring. We had the release of Mario Movie, and Super Nintendo World opened at Hollywood Universal, so... Why LA was moved out of Wave 4, because it was supposed to be here originally, I won't understand, so I put it back. As for Vancouver Velocity, taking the spot as the new Wave Ender, I moved Singapore Speedway out, and... This was the only city course that I could place here. I'll get into why that is later. Although, with its inclusion here, I will make one other change to Vancouver Velocity that I won't be doing to any other course. That is just rerouting it, because I feel like the routing just severely holds this course back. So, the current routing is Vancouver Velocity 1, 2R, and then 3. Just swap laps 1 and 3. Make it 3, 2R, 1. So the new Wave 4 will be an unchanged fruit cup of Amsterdam Drift, Riverside Park, DK Summit, and Yoshi's Island. And then the Boomerang Cup of Los Angeles Laps, Chaco Mountain, Waluigi Stadium, and Vancouver Velocity. I actually think that this is the first wave where I would consider my changes to be a bit of a downgrade, as losing Singapore Speedway is pretty big considering that was one of the best courses of the wave. Heck, it's the best city course. However, I think moving it to a later wave will be worth it in the long run. It's just that wave 4 has to go down in quality a little bit. Joining Singapore in moving to other waves are Bangkok Rush and Mario Circuit. Mario Circuit we already saw in wave 3, Bangkok and Singapore we'll see again soon. And actually, this wave has not only no courses completely removed, but nothing entirely new is here either. Alright, Wave 5 time, and we are back to some very big changes here. Starting off with the Feather Cup. This one's the less changed of the two, as both Athens Dash and Moonview Highway get to stay where they are. Daisy Cruiser is still here as well, but a little bit of a spoiler alert, it's been moved to the third course of the Cherry Cup. Taking Squeaky Clean Sprint Spot will actually be Piranha Plant Cove. I still think it was a little strange to include Petey Piranha in this wave, but not this course, so I put them back together. And to take the second slot of the Feather Cup, I'm going to be putting a course that most people were expecting to be in the Boost Course Pass that didn't end up happening, Airship Fortress. Now we move into the Cherry Cup, and from here on out, both for this cup and all of Wave 6, um, yeah, none of the courses are even in their original spots anymore. Although, like I mentioned earlier, Daisy Cruiser is the third slot here. Taking the lead of the Cherry Cup will be the course originally meant to be here, Bangkok Rush. Like I mentioned earlier, I just swapped its placement with LA. For the second slot of the Cherry Cup, I'm going to do what Nintendo should have, and instead of Sunset Wilds, we will be getting Yoshi Desert. I still don't understand why Nintendo included Sunset Wilds in the Boost Course Pass if the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe lighting engine can't support the sunset. If they wanted to give us a GBA Desert Course that bad, we should have just gotten Yoshi Desert, so here it is. GBA Desert Course that doesn't have any issues. For the fourth slot of the Cherry Cup, I had a bit of a tough time figuring out what to put here, because the options I had were very limited. Ultimately, I went with a choice that I don't like, but it was also the only one, that being Romavanti. 
Initially, I really didn't want to put Rome and Athens in the same wave, but they are different enough in playstyle that I guess I'm fine with it because, again, I'll get into my city stuff later, but I made a change to wave 6 that required Rome to be here. That's the new wave 5, though. Athens Dash, Airship Fortress, Moonview Highway, and Piranha Plant Cove in the Feather Cup, and Bangkok Rush, Yoshi Desert, Daisy Cruiser, and Rome Avanti in the Cherry Cup. Yeah, sure, this wave did lose LA Laps, Koopa Cape, Vancouver Velocity, and Squeaky Clean Sprint, but at least those were all just moved to other waves. They weren't outright removed like Sunset Wilds was, although it deserved that. In terms of new additions, on the other hand, we have Airship Fortress and Yoshi Desert. Now we move over to Wave 6, and I'm just gonna say, this is by far the most changes we will have for any wave in this video, as the only course from the original wave that's even still here is Madrid Drive, which will now be the opener of the wave in the Acorn Cup. For the second slot of the Acorn Cup, we're going to be putting the course that was originally intended to be here, that being Maple Treeway. I think this serves as a fitting final Wii course for the Boost Course Pass. Yeah, it means we have to wait an extra year for it, but I think it's worth it. Now, you may have noticed, if you've been paying attention, that I have only used one SNES course throughout this entire Boost Course Pass so far. Here comes the second one. Taking the third slot of the Acorn Cup, it will be Vanilla Lake 2. Now I know what you're thinking. Isn't this course awful? And to that I say, yes. In fact, it is in my bottom five courses in the entire series. But I don't think it's beyond redemption. I think if they change it up even just a little bit, give it the same kind of treatment Bowser Castle 3 got, it could maybe be at least passable. For a while, I actually considered filling this slot with RMX Vanilla Lake 2 instead of the original, but it would just feel weird using only one RMX course, so I opted for the original. And ending off the Acorn Cup will be Squeaky Clean Sprint. Now by this point, it will have actually released in Tor already, making this a Tor course. As such, the number of Nitros has once again been balanced back to 16 and 5. And here we are. The Spiny Cup, as usual, will be the grand finale to the Boost Course Pass. We already have one course in place, as if you remember earlier, I said I swapped the placements of Wii and 3DS Rainbow Road, so now, 3DS Rainbow Road will end the Booster Course Pass. You can also probably guess what course is going to start the Spiny Cup, as there's only one city we haven't used yet. That of course being Singapore Speedway. This time, we will be saving the best city course for last. Now, in the original Booster Course Pass, the second slot of the Spiny Cup was Rosalina's Ice World. But we already have one mediocre ice course this wave, we don't need a second. This course was always meant to be a double dash course, totally not Mushroom City. So I think it's only right that we make it a double dash course. I'm thinking Dino Dino Jungle. Let's bring in the better jungle course in this booster course pass. And now for the final course we talk about today, the third slot in the Spiny Cup. You guys can probably guess what it's going to be. The original Boost Course Pass ended with a Bowser Castle into a Rainbow Road, so we will here too. Filling this slot will be GBA Bowser Castle 4. Just look at the remake that this thing got in tour, there's no way it was meant to stay in a mobile game forever. This thing is coming to a mainline Mario Kart, and it's coming now. Plus, I said earlier, we need more Bowser's Castles, so let's at least get a third one. My finale for the Booster Course Pass will consist of... The Acorn Cup of Madrid Drive, Maple Treeway, Vanilla Lake 2, and Squeaky Clean Sprint, and the Spiny Cup having Singapore Speedway, Dino Dino Jungle, GBA Bowser Castle 4, and 3DS Rainbow Road. I basically completely redid this wave, as the only course left over from the original is Madrid Drive. With that said though, I would call this a definitive upgrade from the original wave, as with the exception of Vanilla Lake 2, Every course here is either a fan favorite, or got an amazing remake, which would easily make this the most hyped up wave. It also has the two best city courses. Looking at the total changes from the original wave, we see that Romavanti, Piranha Plant Cove, 
SNES Bowser Castle 3 and Wii Rainbow Road were moved to other waves. DK Mountain, Daisy Circuit, and Rosalina's Ice World were completely removed. And Vanilla Lake 2, Dino Dino Jungle, and GBA Bowser Castle 4 get to completely join the Booster Course Pass through this new wave. Now that we have all the courses laid out, let me explain what I meant earlier by the city courses were a pain for me. So, the reason that I moved Singapore Speedway to Wave 6 was so that I could have it and Madrid, the two best city courses, being saved for last. However, in doing this, I realized that I had to move Rome Avanti into Wave 5 because that was the only other wave of the Booster Course Pass to release after its release in Tour. Unlike the Nitros, which can just be changed around, I can't do that with the cities. The cities must release in Tour first. The reason I didn't want Rome and Athens in the same wave is because back when city speculation was still happening, once we got Athens, I thought, okay, there's no chance of Rome happening anymore. They would be too similar. Now, obviously, we did get both of them, and the courses aren't that similar, but I still didn't really feel like putting them in the same wave. However, with the two slots in Wave 6 filled, both of those courses, based on their release dates in Tor, could only be in Wave 5. So, I had to do what I had to do, and Vancouver, unfortunately, had to be moved up to Wave 4. But, that's my little city rant. Ultimately, I still think it worked out fine, but I'm not a fan of having to put Rome and Athens in the same wave still. Before we finish up, though, Let's just take one more look through the quote-unquote patch notes of this Booster Course Pass. We had a grand total of nine courses that were fully removed here, those being Toad Circuit, SNES Mario Circuit 3, Calamari Desert, Mushroom Gorge, Peach Gardens, Sunset Wilds, DK Mountain, Daisy Circuit, and Rosalina's Ice World. I think it's pretty obvious why Toad Circuit and Mario Circuit 3 were removed. I see both of those as wastes of DLC slots in the original Booster Course Pass. Sunset Wilds should be another pretty obvious removal. The game doesn't support the sunset mechanic, why is it here in the first place? Peach Gardens and Calamari Desert were both removed for the same reason as well. Their altering paths were kinda controversial on release, so I opted to just go past that entirely and remove the courses. Daisy Circuit and Mushroom Gorge, meanwhile, like I said, two Wii courses were getting removed, and these two were the most expendable in my eyes. DK Mountain had to be taken out so the better GameCube Jungle course could get in, and Rosalina's Ice World I took out because I wanted to give an even worse ice course a chance at redemption instead. Looking at the new additions, obviously nine courses were removed, so nine new ones were added in. Those nine being Shy Guy Bazaar, Piranha Plant Pipeline, Koopa Troopa Beach, Mushroom Bridge, Airship Fortress, Yoshi Desert, Vanilla Lake 2, Dino Dino Jungle, and Bowser Castle 4. Shy Guy Bazaar I brought in as a Mario Kart 7 Mushroom Cup course that is actually worthy of being DLC. Not to mention the fact that it was scrapped from the Wii U DLC, so I'll give it a second chance here. Pipeline's edition I feel like should be obvious. It felt weird that one Tor Nitro was left out, so it gets to be here. Koopa Troopa Beach and... Vanilla Lake 2 were mainly just because I didn't have any better options from those games, although Vanilla Lake 2 does get the bonus of now every SNES archetype will have been remade in a main series Mario Kart. Mushroom Bridge was brought in to fill a fourth GameCube slot like the original Booster Course Pass was supposed to have. Airship Fortress is here because it felt weird with all the other fan favorites like Coconut Mall, Waluigi Pinball, and Sky Garden getting in the DLC that this one was left out. Bowser Castle 4 is here because, again, there's no way this good of a remake was meant to just rot forever in a mobile game. And Dino Dino Jungle and Yoshi Desert are both replacing courses from the same games that are very similar, but worse. But there we have it. My full Booster Course Pass remake. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. Do you think I made it better? Do you think I made it worse? Or is it about equal quality? And if you've got your own picks, let me hear those too. And hey, while you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out the links in the description too. I have a Discord server, which is the best way to keep up to date with what I have going on and what's upcoming. And I have a Twitch where I stream all kinds of stuff. 
In fact, if you're watching this video around the time that it first releases, I am currently live doing my full ranking of every single course in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and I'd love to see you there. But that's all for me for today. I hope you all enjoyed the video, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you.